Easter is, Easter is Easter, and apparently we have hot cross buns, and I see them everywhere at Easter time, and I kind of don't really see them throughout the year. I see those sticky cinnamon bun-isms, but I don't see hot cross buns, and I just want to make them on a Sunday or a Saturday when I've got a day off, and, you know, it's a winter's day, and it's, you, know, you want to keep warm, and it's the best thing to do because you can have the oven on. Okay, over here I've got everything measured. Baking is delicious and having yourself organized and having it just like that on the bench and then getting your little isms together is a really great way to start. I have my oven on, okay, so that's been switched on for about a good five, ten minutes while I was getting everything ready. Very easy recipe, really, really super simple. So come with me and follow me on this really cool journey of making hot cross buns. So we're going to start, so I've got this. Now if I didn't have this, I'd use my hands, just like we did with the um, beautiful cinnamon scrolls. Um, just the same kneading process. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add all my ingredients into here. So I've got some lovely coconut oil for the fat. I've got some beautiful organic soy milk. Now you could use coconut milk. You could use rice milk, oat milk, nut milk. You could use water. You could use dairy if you're into dairy, some sort of a raw milk. You could use kefir. You could use any kind of liquid you like. I'm choosing soy milk at the moment because I, I have it, it's here, it's in the kitchen, and I don't particularly want to run to the shops. So it's there. I've got baker's yeast, which is a beautiful um, yeast that you can get anywhere. Look for the Bob um, Mills, Red Mills brand, which is awesome and I love them. I've got some gorgeous caramel coconut sugar. I love using this stuff, it's very special um, from Indonesia. It's really tasty, it has a really delicious scent to it. It's quite lovely. Okay, I'm going to put now the flour straight into here. Now I've got a white spelt flour. Once again, I love spelt. And the reason why I'm using white spelt flour is because I want that fluffiness coming through. And if I used wholemeal spelt flour, I'd get, I'd get a little bit of that, but it'd be still a little bit denser and quite, a, quite you know, stodgy, if you know what I mean. Like almost like one of those, you know those rock cookies? Have you heard of those? Yeah. One of those cookies, I don't want it to be like that. I want it to be bready and doughy. Okay, straight into my beautiful mixer that my girlfriend, Simone, let me. I love you, Simone. Okay, straight into here. Okay, and straight on. So what I want, what I want to do is I want to knead, okay? Now remember, if you don't have one of these, don't panic. You can still knead, so check out what's happening. So I'm just gonna put on this. I've got the dough blade on. And this machine's great, it's just going to pick up the dough, as it's doing now. So I've got it on low, I'm going to speed it up and I'm just going to give this a good, a good whipping. <laughs> oh yeah. Alright, so now it's kind, of, it's kind of got together a bit, I want to put my egg in straight away and I'm going to put it into a bowl. I've got to remember to do that because sometimes Mother Nature doesn't come to the party. So, in other words, I want to make sure my egg is perfect. Pop that in. This is so cool. And I want some spices in there. I love the idea of putting um, clove in there, if you have it, clove power, pl uh, power. Clove power! Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> clove or cinnamon. Okay, just a good splash. I mean, look at this, this is just beautiful. Look at this stuff, it's just, oh, it's so lovely. I wanna put some nutmeg in there too. Now, if you don't have nutmeg and you just have clove, don't worry, it's okay. Don't panic, whatever you do. Let me just lower this down so I can get in there. These are great, look at these. Check this out, actually. These are whole nutmeg. And all I've been doing, I've just been, oh, if this was, if this was smell-o-vision, you could smell this. Look at the beautiful texture in here as I'm grating. Isn't it amazing? That's mother nature, it's quite gorgeous, lots of flavour. So I'm, I'm at home, I don't have cloves, but I have cinnamon, I've got cloves. <laughs> but I've got nutmeg and I've got some cinnamon, it's fine, totally fine. Now if you wanted to, you totally could put some allspice in there. So that's in, delicious, delicious. I'm just gonna Scrape around the bottom a bit just to pick that up. And then I'm going to put my beautiful currants in here. Now, if you didn't have currants, 
think about what would you what would you use? I would use sultanas, for sure. I'd mix some apricots if I had apricots or if I had figs. I'm just giving you an idea of what you can use if you don't have currants. So raisins, sultanas, sliced apricots, mix it with some figs, some chopped up figs, anything like that. So don't panic or run to the shops once again. Okay, straight into there, straight on. These are my hands. I'm gonna need this for a good oh, eight minutes and then we'll come back. So I'll see you in about eight minutes. Okay, this has been, this is great. This is so great, look at this. Nice and sticky, quite delicious. Now remember, back to when we made the, the scrolls and you don't have one of these. This is all going into a bowl, remember? And you're gonna mix it up with your hands and then you're gonna dust the surface of your table. You're gonna clear off your dining table if you don't have a lot of bench space. Just really find a spot where you can do it. I've actually done this on the floor before with a chopping board and sat with my goddaughter and actually kneaded bread. And, I, and it's just such a beautiful thing to do. So flowering surface and then you're pushing and you're rolling. Pushing, rolling back, pushing, rolling back. Now look where my hand is. I'm using only this part of my hand, okay? It's really interesting. A lot of people get in there and do these ones. Don't do it, just really relax. Really relax and breathe and just do this. Okay, that's if you don't have one of these machines. But I'll see you back in about eight minutes and then we'll get to it. Oh, we're taking care of this very needy hot cross bun. Get it? Needy? Needy? Okay, we're good. This has been running. It's awesome. Awesome. Okay, now I need to get it out of this thing. All right. <laughs> it's stuck. It's like glue. Look. Look at the gluten in that, in that flour. It's amazing. All right. This is awesome. And it smells and tastes... Great. Okay, I'm going to put it into a bowl. A little bit of coconut oil. Same as the um, scrolls, just so the dough doesn't stick on the bowl as it's rising, so it's all ready to go. Okay, get it out of there. All the raisins are, sorry, the currants are all nicely incorporated. Let's pop it there for a minute. Oh, it smells, it smells like a bakery. Okay, same as last time. I keep going back to the cinnamon scrolls because, you know, that's our reference point, let's be honest. We're both baking together. This is it. Just turning it, as you can see under there. I'm just pushing it under like this. And then straight into here. Straight into a warm area. So my stove is nice and delicious and warm and toasty. And then this straight on there, a nice tea towel and over here, and then we'll see you back in about 25 minutes. Yes, have a green juice, chill out. Our hot cross buns mix has been sitting over there, and I swear to God, the place smells like a bakery. It's really awesome. Come, 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 come. So yours has been sitting in a nice warm place as well. Super, super important. So the oven is on, remember, and it's been running. Um, on, so I need it to be super hot. <gasps> so what I want to do is I want to um, push this down a bit and I would love to make at least, oh, maybe, I don't know how many we're going to make actually, a few um, hot cross buns. Now what I love, 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 love about this moment is I want the cross on there. And how I'm going to get there, <laughs> how I'm going to get that is with really dark wholemeal spelt flour. And I'm going to make a little slurry of glory. So it's just flour and water and salt, really. Just a little bit of salt. <laughs> it's, actually, it's actually funny. I never knew how they did the crosses, right? It's pretty funny. So this is how you do it to make that cross. So I want to get this ready and with us so we can just jump straight into it. So I need to make... And the reason why I call it a slurry is because it's going to be looking and the texture of it's that kind of muddy slurry look at that texture a little bit more water how's my sink isn't it beautiful just mix that through a little bit more water at a time so what are you going to do at home right it's just have that water running just have that mixing through 
Just a little bit, little bit like this till we have a slurry. Okay, perfect. So you want it to be, you know, at least dripping off there. So start with a little bit of water at a time, like I said. This is fun. Now pretend, right? Pretend I don't have an icing bag, which I do, but I'm gonna pretend that I don't. I've got Ziploc bags hanging around. I've even used a shopping, a plastic shopping bag before. So I'm gonna put my slurry into here. Or even just a plastic, a plastic bag. You know what my mum does? She recycles all those plastic. You know when you go to the, grow, the, the fruit store and you get apples and you put them in those plastic, really thin bags? She keeps all them and they're great to use as well. So you're just gonna put that into there. Just like that. Get all that out. Put it into one corner. The slurry, and just push it down like this. Perfect. And then we have a beautiful little icing bag of glory. I'm gonna set that aside. This is cool. I'm glad I'm showing you this because I have girlfriends who like to bake that are good bakers and sometimes their icing bags burst and they don't have one. So this is what you can do. Where am I? I need a baking tin. And these and I need some of that beautiful unbleached baking paper. Okay. Now I've got a little bit of maple syrup. I just want this to stick down. You could use anything, it's just because it's there. So any kind of oil, just to make sure this sticks down, okay? That's all that's gonna do, it's just gonna stay there. All right, this is the next pit we wanna do. We want to, do I need flour? I do, just in case it sticks, right? A little bit of flour on the workbench. Remember we put, oh this is lovely and warm. Remember we put some coconut oil in the bowl and see how nothing gets stuck in there, which is kind of awesome. And straight onto our chopping board, just pushing it down a bit like this. I need a knife. And I would like to cut a strip like this. I'd like to get one. This is, this is a really cool technique. So you're gonna try and get them all the same size. You could, you could get some scales and weigh them if you wanted to, but what's really cool is doing this, just flattening them down a bit. and then just going across like that, and then you can get all the same size. Take that apart. Okay, just over here, a bit of flour. Get present. And I just wanna make this into a ball, really. I want it to look like a hot cross bun. Boom, like that. Grab another one. Now, I'm not fiddling around with this too much. If that feels a bit big, take some off and set it aside and go through the whole batch doing this and take your time, okay? And what you will find, this is what I did at first, I made different sizes and it was actually painful because some were overcooked and some were undercooked and, but then you just get used to, used to doing it and it becomes really, Really easy. So we'll do all this and I'll see you in a minute. All right, I'm up to my last ones and look at them there. I think I've got bits and pieces, so I really want to knead that back in so I don't have. A bizarre looking hot cross bun. Pretty easy, isn't it? Seriously, just make the time, get the, get the, get the value system happening around whole food and this will just be your gig. Once a month, maybe once every two months make these. You know, just keep it simple. Don't have to make them every weekend or anything. Okay, straight into here. Now, I want them to kind of be a little bit squished together. So touching. As you can see. And then we're going to make the cross part of this. Just 
super awesome. So how many did we get? We got two, four, six, eight, nice big plump hot cross buns. Okay, hot cross buns. Scissors. Rubbish bin, because you want, don't want to put this near your food. So I'm just going to cut a wee ism off there like that. This is quite runny. Now I'm going to be quite fast here, because I want them to be kind of straight lines and not wiggly crosses. <laughs> so straight on. And just go straight down the next one. And straight down the next one. Okay. Just a bit there. Okay, then turn it around. Make sure that's all in your hand and you're feeling really comfortable here, yeah? And if you muck it up, doesn't matter. The first time I did this, dude, it was like this. I was like, oh. don't worry about it. Just, you'll get there in the end after you make a few batches. Okay. Straight back over to the stove in a warm place and we'll come back to this in about 15 minutes and I'll see you then. Look at this, this is beautiful. 15 minutes, see you soon. It's amazing, can you see that? I'm not going to speak. This is, this is a no speaking episode of the raising of the hot cross buns. They've risen beautifully. Look at them. They're ready to go in. I want to put just a little bit of this maple syrup, just a little bit, just paint it with my very dodgy brush. <laughs> you know, in the perfection, there's imperfection, right? And I love my dodgy brush. Okay, I just want to do that just a little bit. You don't have to, I just feel like I want to. Straight into the oven and I'll see you back here. I reckon 20, 30 minutes. We'll just see, hey? So your oven's heated and you know, you've, you've come with me along this far, so straight into the oven and I'll see you very, very soon. The hot cross buns are just about ready like a minute. Now I just want to go over a couple of, couple of things here. So when I made the slurry, remember, and I iced it on, I felt like I made it a bit too runny. So have, if you want it thicker, then don't put as much water in and then you get that kind of, it'll, it'll kind of sit up higher, that kind of cross. Um, the second thing is this oven needs to be on quite a high temperature. So right up there around 200 actually, 200 C, 200 degrees. And just be mindful of that because a lot of ovens operate on different, different temperatures. Some operate really high and they have a fan forced and some operate quite low on that temperature. So just be mindful. So checking on this every now and then. 10 to 15 minutes. And look what's happened here. They have, they have, they have just gotten together like hot cross buns do. Now what I want to do is add some maple syrup onto this to just get them really lovely and glossy. Stop it. Look at that. I'm 30 seconds in front. Beautiful, just like that. You can just see the cross, right? Don't touch them. <laughs> Don't let me eat these hot, because I tend to do that. I want them to get cooled down a bit and then we'll um, have a cup of tea, nice chai and have these. Enjoy these. Let me know how you go. If you decide to put chocolate chips in them, get a really good quality chocolate chips. I love the idea of using Loving Earth chocolate. I think it's gorgeous. Play around with, the, with what, you, what, what fruit that you want to put in there. I'm salivating because I want to eat them. Don't eat them hot. Do not touch them with your fingers because you will burn your fingers. So just let them be and then put them on a wire rack. Just take them straight out like this of this thing and put them on a wire rack. See how that comes out? It's such ease and flow and sit them over there and allow them to cool. And I'll see you in the next recipe. Have fun with this. Don't eat them. Don't touch them. Don't touch them. I can't help it. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to cut one. Can I? Should I? No, don't, don't. Do it. Yeah. Don't do it. Don't touch it. I can't help it. Do you I just want to. I want to. I don't. Gratification. <laughs> we'll come back 10 minutes. Come on. This is what happens in this series of Sweet Tooth. We can't, we can't not. Oh. <laughs> hmm. oh, I'll see you soon. It's happening. <laughs>
It's fun and games. This is like a home kitchen here. Everyone's in the back and they're trying to be quiet. But okay, I'm going. Seriously. Okay, I'm not going to start with that. That's retarded. Okay. Oh, I settled in. What am I going to put up with? It's like being whipped. This is a family day, isn't it? How do you start? Yeah. Must have been on the 32. 32. Let's, uh, let's butter this sucker up. <laughs> <laughs>